Hello everyone, this is Mr. Fry again, uh, this time with a video about conservation of mechanical energy practice problems. Uh, on screen I've given you the formula for mechanical energy, uh, which is the gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy of an object or system. Uh, I've also showing on screen right now the uh, formula for gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy, which were covered in a previous video. Uh, so I'm going to take you through four practice problems, starting with this one. 125 gram steel ball with a kinetic energy of 0.25 joules rolls along a horizontal track. So that's down here before it hits this ramp. Uh, it asks how high up an inclined track will the ball roll if friction can be ignored. To solve this problem, um, you're going to first want to get the mass of the steel ball into kilograms so that it will work in a equation or a formula. In order to convert grams to kilograms, you would need to multiply the 125 grams by 1 kilogram per 1,000 grams. In other words, divide by 1,000. So uh, you could do this in a calculator as 125 divided by 1,000 or 125 times 1 divided by 1,000. Or you could just move the decimal place three places to the left. Okay, you're going to end up with 0 0.125 kilograms. After that, um, I'm going to show the formula for mechanical energy to remind you why it matters. Um, it says in the problem that the kinetic energy of the ball is 0 0.25 um, when it's on the horizontal surface. So I put the 0 0.25 under the kinetic energy here. And if you remember, gravitational potential energy depends on height and mass. Uh, obviously, the ball has a constant mass throughout this problem, but its height is going to change. It starts 0 meters above the ground because it's on the ground when it's rolling horizontally. Uh, and when you put a zero in for height for gravitational potential energy, that is makes the whole um, formula give you zero joules. So in other words, the ball has no gravitational potential energy when it's sitting on the ground. Um, so the total mechanical energy of the system here, this steel ball, is, is the value for kinetic energy. It's 0 0.25 joules. In other words, all of the mechanical energy when it's here horizontally is kinetic. Okay. So all the kinetic, kinetic energy will be converted to gravitational potential as the height increases above the ground and velocity decreases uh, eventually to zero meters per second when this thing rolls to a stop up here before it would roll backwards, which we're not talking about the part of the problem uh, here where it would roll backwards. We just want to know how high up the track uh, this thing's going to roll. Okay. Uh, so keep in mind when velocity equals zero meters per second, when this thing comes to a stop, all of the kinetic energy here, this 0 0.25 joules, has then been converted to gravitational potential because the height is now not zero. It's, it's a certain number of meters above the ground or centimeters. Okay, so keeping that in mind and reminding ourselves here that eventually all of that kinetic energy will be gone because it stops, then uh, the mechanical energy still has to equal 0 0.25 joules because energy is never created or destroyed and we're ignoring friction. Okay. So in other words, the 0 0.25 joules has been converted into gravitational potential when this thing's velocity is zero once it's rolled up the track over here. Okay, keeping that in mind, I'm going to go to the other side here. If uh, gravitational potential energy is 0 0.25 joules, we can solve for that object's height using the gravitational potential energy equation. Okay, Plugging in the 0 0.25 here we got from the mechanical energy equation for GPE, we end up with this substitution. We put 0 0.25 joules in for GPE. The mass we converted to kilograms over here, 0 0.125 kilograms. Gravity, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth, and we leave height as a variable since that's what we're solving for. Okay, I'm going to simplify doing the multiplication here. That gives me 1.225 times H equals 0 0.25. You'll notice I've dropped the units out to make it easier to look at at this point. At that point, we would divide both sides of the equation by 1.225. Again, we're dividing because that's the opposite of division here to undo this. Uh, that would cause the 1.225 to disappear from the right side of the equation. We're left with H equals, and then we do 0 0.25 divided by 1.225 in your calculator. You should figure out this ball would roll 0 0.2 meters up the ramp. In other words, a hor or, sorry, a vert vertical distance here of 0 0.2 meters, uh, which we could con uh, convert to centimeters, uh, which would be about 20 centimeters, and that would be our final answer. I'm going to take you to the next problem. 
This one is about a 0.15 kilogram ball thrown into the air, and it rises to a height of 20 meters. It's really high. Um, how much kinetic energy did the ball have when it was thrown initially? Okay, so for this problem, we need to realize something. The gravitational potential energy of this ball at its highest point is going to be equal to the kinetic energy when the ball was first thrown. And we know that because of energy conservation. We know that this person threw the ball from this location. Uh, it's moving at a really high speed because they just threw it. And it's slowing down as it approaches the top of its flight. Okay, and eventually it comes to a stop up here just for a split second. And then it reaccelerates downward. Um, and the gravitational potential up here then begins to convert back into kinetic energy. Uh, keeping that in mind, if we solve for this ball's um, gravitational potential energy at its highest point, uh, simply due to the conservation of energy, we should be able to figure out what its kinetic energy was down here uh, when it was first thrown. So I went ahead and plugged in the mass gravity. I forgot to make that a superscript two there. That should be a little two um, times the height above the ground, which was 20 meters from the problem. And when we put that in our calculators, we should figure out that this gravitational potential energy of this ball is 29.4 joules when it's at 20 meters in height. So that's way up here. Okay. However, you do know a formula for mechanical energy. Uh, it's gravitational potential plus the kinetic energy. So we have 29.4 uh, here for the gravitational potential at the highest point. We also know that the ball comes to a stop up there because in order to change directions and come back down, the velocity has to at some point drop to zero. Um, so we know that when velocity is zero, then kinetic energy is zero. So we can go ahead and put that in there. That means the total mechanical energy of the ball is 29.4 joules at the highest point, which it should be that value throughout the entire problem. Okay, so keeping that in mind, kinetic energy when it was first thrown started converting into gravitational potential energy. So this 29.4 joules is the key to the problem here. Because if you think about it, once this ball um, reaccelerates downward and is at this point the end point of the problem, or right when it was thrown, uh, that's when it's going to have its maximum uh, kinetic energy. So at that point, gravitational potential energy would be zero, and all of the 29.4 joules would have been converted to kinetic. And again, that would either be at the beginning of the problem when it started as kinetic energy, or at the end of this uh, motion path here where the gravitational potential has converted back into kinetic energy at the bottom. So we're using reasoning skills and the mechanical energy equation to come to the conclusion that the kinetic energy when thrown was 29.4 joules. Again, we're able to ignore things like air resistance, so friction is not considered here. Okay, I'm going to take you to uh, the next problem here. That was our final answer. Here we have a 10 kilogram rock uh, that is dropped and hits the ground at a speed of 60 meters per second. And the question asked us to calculate the gravitational potential energy of the rock before it was dropped, and then to calculate how high, uh, from how high it was dropped, and to ignore friction. Okay, uh, I'm going to start us here with the mechanical energy equation and remind you uh, that you can go ahead and solve this question since you're given a mass and a velocity. Go ahead and solve this thing for kinetic energy. Okay, even though it's asking you for gravitational potential. Uh, you know that those things can turn into each other throughout a problem. So I went ahead and put the formula for that here and made the following substitutions. So we get mass from the problem and velocity from the problem. Using the order of operations, you get that, um, that exponent taken care of first to make the 60 squared 3600. And you can go ahead and do 0.5 times 10 to get uh, 5 here. And then 5 times 3600 gives you a kinetic energy of 18,000 joules. So that's the kinetic energy when the rock hits the ground. Okay. However, you know uh, that if you have the object's kinetic energy when it hits the ground, that is most likely equal to its original gravitational potential energy when velocity was zero. So if it was on this cliff, it would have been when it was sitting still. Okay. So before it started moving. Um, and using that little bit of knowledge, you could plug in the kinetic energy you solved for here. Notice the gravitational potential because it's hitting the ground at this point when the kinetic energy is so high, uh, height is zero, so GPE is zero. Okay, But it, height wasn't always zero, right? It was up here just a little bit ago. 
So before it was dropped, the velocity was zero meters per second, which means none of this energy here would have been kinetic. It would have all been gravitational potential. So it's safe to conclude that the gravitational energy, uh, potential energy before it was dropped was the same 18,000 joules, since we're ignoring friction. Uh, so that's one of our answers right here. That's what the question was asking us for. I'm going to go ahead and add in the other part of the problem here from how high did it drop? So we can also figure that out. Keeping in mind, we have a value for gravitational potential right here ready for us. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the equation in for that and make the following substitutions. I have the GPE is 18,000, so that's when it was up here on the cliff. Uh, we have a mass and we have a uh, acceleration due to gravity. We're solving this thing for height. Okay, I'm going to drop the units out. 10 times 9.8 gives me 98 times h, because we're just carrying that h down. Carry the 18,000 down. Right now we have h times 98. We need to divide both sides of the equation by 98. And we can figure out that this thing was originally dropped from a height of 183.7 meters. You should circle your final answers. This one has a two-part final answer. Okay, I'm quickly going to take you through a fourth problem. A diver with a mass of 70 kilograms stands motionly at the top of a 3 meter high diving platform. Calculate his potential energy relative to the water surface while standing on the platform and his speed when he enters the pool. I'm going to quickly take you through this. You can re-watch this video as necessary. I have the mechanical energy equation and we're going to solve this thing for gravitational potential by doing the following uh, operations. I'm going to put the substitutions in here with no units and we can figure out the gravitational potential energy relative to the water when they're on the platform. That's that's the answer right there, 2058 joules. Okay. We're going to keep in mind though that mechanical energy transformation is happening here. As that diver heads toward the water from the platform, GPE drops, kinetic energy increases above zero. Okay. So right now it's on the platform, this is the situation with the mechanical energy. But keeping in mind, as height decreases, velocity increases. Um, which means the gravitational potential energy converts to kinetic. So all 2,058 joules are kinetic energy when the diver hits the water. Because height is zero, right? Uh, so we have the mechanical energy equation here. And this would be the ending mechanical energy situation. All of what was gravitational potential up here on the platform has been converted into kinetic energy. At that point we can go ahead and assume that uh, that value for it is the kinetic energy when entering the water and at that point you're simply solving the kinetic energy equation for velocity which is the following operations so these are the substitutions we need to take one half of 70 or 0.5 times 70 to get 35 divide both sides by 35 you end up with v squared equals 58.8 and to undo a squared variable you take the square root of both sides and that should give you a velocity of 7.7 .7 meters per second when the diver strikes the water. So your final answers in this problem are GPE 2058 joules, velocity 7.7 .7 meters per second. If you found the video helpful please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. This was Mr. Fry and I hope you found this helpful.